On April the 5th, Tony Khan made a huge announcement. This wasn't like the ones that came before it. And while memes, jokes and the like were made, this time it was huge. On Sunday, August 27th, AW will host All in London at Wembley Stadium, the first show of its kind in over 30 years. Today, I'm joined by Troy to fantasy book the card for what could be the biggest attended wrestling show on UK soil. How are you, mate? I'm good. I'm I'm very excited for this. This is this is really really cool. I love fantasy booking. Um, I also hate it because this card that I've got has chopped and changed so much over even the last half an hour. Um, but yeah, all day it's, it's good. Sending me messages, asking me questions. <laughs> Got to seek clarity. <laughs> it's very it's been a very stressful day as far as that's concerned. But I imagine it's gonna be an absolutely stacked card. Yes. So have you first of all, have you got anything on your pre-show? I have. I've got three matches on my pre-show. Let's go then. What's the first yeah. one? I'm I'm gonna kick things off with uh Lee Moriarty against AR Fox, because they're both fucking superb. And I just don't see enough of them on my television box. Um, so I think that that'd be a good show opener, at least a pre-show opener, uh, get the crowd hot and invested. Um, I've also got another singles match. I've got Takeshita against Lance Archer because two big lads big doing murders, fight. big hoss fight. That Spoilers, it's not the first big hoss fight on my card. Big Tasty will be happy. I'd be disappointed if it was. <laughs> so yeah, Takeshita uh, and Lance Archer. And then just before we go into the main show, uh, just as the place is filled up, we're going to have uh, our Battle Royale. That's just going to feature everyone and anyone on the roster. But I've included two Forbidden Door entries on there. One of them being your boy from the 0121, Dan Maloney. And your other one, Minoru Suzuki. And I'd like the final two to be them because I also want to see them do murders on each other. Yeah, that'd be nice. So Ooh. just to clarify, because I'm an idiot and I forgot to clarify the rules <laughs> um, before, which I'll do better next time. Um, essentially, we're going to do a 10 to 13 match card. Um, that's including the pre-show. There are a maximum of seven Forbidden Door entrants, so people who are not contracted to AEW or Ring of Honor. And uh, the Battle Royal, you get, you get can kind of get two buys as far as like, Two like indie guys, two for indoor guys, and also three gimmick matches maximum. So far, battle royal doesn't count as well as a no. gimmick match. Also, you want to do you want to clarify about what a gimmick match counts? So, a multi man yeah, tag match so, is only a gimmick match, is it? Yeah, so a gimmick match essentially is anything which changes from a, ge- a general wrestling match. So, for example, the, the ones I, I kind of give to you guys was like an I am a match because obviously. It's got a time limit, multiple falls, yeah. um, ladder match, tables match, steel cage, all that sort of steel stuff. cage, any yeah. anything that is different from general wrestling rules. Yeah, um, obviously AEW usually like to throw a couple of them on the pay per view cards, so that's why I thought three was a fair number. Yeah, yeah. So, that's fair. so yeah. Now we've got that out of the way. Uh, do you want to just run us through? Um, again, very quickly, what your pre-show was. Uh, so my pre-show kicked off with Lee Moriarty against AR Fox. Then we had Takeshita against Lance Archer. And then finally on the pre-show, uh, a battle royale with the two forbidden door entrants being Dan Maloney and Minoru Suzuki. So was that like the casino battle royale? Like uh, yes. winning the world title shot? Yes. Um, okay. Do you, okay. Do you want to know who's winning that? If, if you've decided who's winning it, by all means. I haven't, but the answer is Dan Maloney. <laughs> Oof, your main events are in danger there. <laughs> um, right, let's let's get to the uh, the main show then. What's the main the, show, uh, right. Opening well, all in in well, London. I said there was going to be some murders. I said there was going to be some hoss fights. So I'm kicking things off for the TNT Championship with a six-pack challenge featuring Jeff Cobb, your forbidden door entry, Powerhouse Hobbs, Samoa Joe, Eddie Kingston, Keith Lee, and Brody King. Fucking they've cow. they've had to reinforce the ring for this one. Fuck me. Um, it's like an all you can eat buffet. It's just it's just endless meat. Big big tasty. You'd have to go outside and uh, <laughs> just cool off a little. 
get a little cool off, go to the smoking area and just get like a <laughs> get like a handkerchief and just fan himself. That that is a very, very meaty affair. So I assume that obviously Hobbs is going in as TNT champion there. Hobbs is going in as TNT champion. Uh, and the, the other Hob, the House of Black, um I'm assuming they're not defending their trios title on your card, then that would in no, the case that they were. They were, and I and I had to change things up because just as I say, it's changed a hell of a lot uh, multiple times in the last half an hour at least, generally throughout the day. Um, yeah, I did have them defending their trios title on there. It was a tough decision not to put them on there because what I had would have been very good, I think, in my mind at least. Um, but I also just want to see him in the ring with other massive, massive men. So, um, yeah. That's why he's made it in here. But yeah, Powerhouse Hobbs going in as, as TNT champion. Personally, uh, I'd like to see Jeff Cobb come out with that. Yeah. That would giving, be giving everyone a tour of the islands, a non-stop tour of the islands. Jeff Jeff Cobb has been showing up a little bit more in AEW recently. Mm. Um, so very, yeah. very possible he could. Yeah. Prizes I'm, there. I'm just a big fan of all of those men in that match. Like, just... I just love big lads wrestling. Um, yeah. But yeah, all of them entertaining I, enough in singles matches. I'd, I'd just love to see that. I'd certainly say that Brody King's probably in my top three AW wrestlers at the moment, for sure. Yeah. yeah so that, that was, yeah. Such a good talent. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that was the opener. That, that'll that get the crowd hot. Yeah. How you that's, hot? that's my thinking. Um, so <laughs> we're going to continue with the murder. Uh, and this is going to be the first of my stipulation gimmick matches for the New Japan World uh, TV title, Zack Sabre Jr. versus uh, Brian Danielson in a submission match. Ooh, that's eerily similar to something I may have put that <laughs> um, I think, yeah, this this makes perfect sense to book this on the UK show. Yeah. Um, if, if they can bear, bear in mind that Forbidden Doors two months earlier, I'd even go as far as like doing a teaser for Bid Door. Yeah, absolutely. Like having having a stare down between the two of for Bid Door mm-hmm. and announce it for this because yeah. Zack Sabre Jr. has been very, very vocal about Brian Danielson and he's mm-hmm. been very, very vocal about not wrestling Brian Danielson in America. Mm-hmm. We're better than his home soil. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, this would be it it writes itself like people have been calling for this for for quite some time as you say Zack Sabre Jr has been very vocal about it um they it, it, when it happens I'm not even say if it's if it happens when it happens because it will and I imagine it will be it all in um it's going to be superb stipulation or not I've put it on there just because I think that it suits it I think it'd be cool and yeah. I'm also a very big fan of stipulation uh, sorry submission matches you don't see those often enough. Um, and I used to really, really enjoy them on the occasions that you did get them. Um, so I think it'd be perfect for these two. Yeah, I think almost you could have got away with just booking a standard singles match with this, mm. purely because they're probably going to be a very submission-heavy match anyway. True. But True. I like True. the added kind of wrinkle that that one of them has to submit. Yeah. And also, also it, it kind of like plays off... Um, the story of Danielson submitting against MJF and like him doubting himself after that, mm-hmm. and just kind of being unhinged and murdering Hangman Page with screwdrivers. So yeah, yeah, I'm down for that. <laughs> What's next then? Um, so we've got. I don't think this counts as a stipulation. It doesn't count as a stipulation. It's a winner take all match because both people I have a say that counts as a stipulation. Fine, although I'm aware that by the time all in comes one or maybe both of these people may not have the respective belts that they hold. And this is something that I think was fantasy booked by a lot of people um, before she joined the company. I've got for the TBS and the Ring of Honor uh, Women's Championship winner take all, Jay Cargill against Athena. Fucking hell, that'd be stiff. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah we, obviously they've they've done it before when, before Athena turned heel and went in full murder mode. And that's, um, that's why I think it would be more interesting now because Athena's quite a, a different character. Yeah, I'd I'd even argue you wouldn't need to necessarily do the unification there. Like, 
Oh, it doesn't have to be unification oh, as such. The, the only re- the only reason being, I'm playing kind of playing devil's advocate here, is it seems very much like Taya Valkyrie is going to take that belt off James. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. which so, was to my point a moment ago where I said it's questionable whether one of these will have the belt come that time. It does feel like, as you say, yeah. Taya Valkyrie is probably going to take that. So, but then for Jay to kind of bounce back and go after Athena, mm. who was like the person who took her to the limit the most, other than Taya Valkyrie, yeah. then. That's a that's a very good kind of stepping on point from there. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, what we got next? Uh, second stipulation match of the card. I hope, I hope you've got plenty of time on your hands because this one is an Iron Man match for the IWGP United States Championship between Kenny Omega and Adam Cole. Jesus wept. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that'll that'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. I don't think we really need to say much else about that, do we? No, I mean, th- um, there's a few people I wanted to put in there. I'm just, who, who really would I like to sit and like and watch for 60 minutes? I know um, is it Danielson and Hangman had the 60 minute match. They had the 60 minute draw. And who else did? Did Kenny and someone else? Was it Kenny and Brian? Kenny, Kenny and Danielson. Was Danielson, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that was 60 or 30. It might have been 30. I can't remember. Possibly. And then, but, and then Danielson had the uh, the Iron Man match with MJF. Yes. So I thought I, there's not many people I could sit and watch. Well, yeah, not many people I could sit and watch for like a full hour. Those two, I absolutely could. So that's my that's my stipula- it's my second stipulation match. Um, I, I think that Adam Cole, baby, might tear a hole in space and time in Wembley Stadium. <laughs> I would agree. Yeah. Get get your ear defenders out there, kids. Um, <laughs> yeah, that that's like a kind of cheat code on match of the year, that isn't it? Really? Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I realise I've not said who I think or who would like to win the matches of an out so far. Obviously, I yeah. said Jeff Cobb for the TNT Championship. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'd have Zack Saber Junior retaining the the New Japan World Title World TV Title. Um, I would have. Jade Cargill win both belts. I love Athena, but I think a lot of people still question Jade Cargill. I think she's come on absolutely leaps and bounds since she started and proves every single time that she, she's stepping up and getting better and improving. And I don't even think it's in in doubt or in question now. Like, she is a competent wrestler. She is a good wrestler to watch. I think having something like this would more than solidify that. So I'd have her take both belts there. Um, as far as the Iron Man match goes, uh, I'd have Adam Cole win it. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, but that, yeah, as that's, that's a dream match. Like there isn't an awful lot you can say. I mean, there's lots you could say on it, but it it, it speaks for itself. I think watching those two in it in, in a match, Iron Man or not, would be superb. Um, so yeah, I'd have Cole going over in that. Awesome. Um, what's next then? Oh, do you want some more murder? Because I've got it for you. Always, you know your audience here. <laughs> uh, for the Ring of Honor Pure Championship, Shibata against Kenta. There's your other forbidden door entry. Fucking hell. I don't think Shibata's allowed to fucking wrestle Kenta. <laughs> I kick him too hard that he breaks his brain again. Um, <laughs> that I mean, to be fair, that's a, a match that New Japan teased and teased and teased and we never mm. got. Yeah. Um, I'm giving it I- you now. I'd be down for Shibata versus Kenta. Yeah. Um, and I would have Shibata retain. Absolutely. The right yeah. choice. I think Kenta's <laughs> kind of like a sort of like nomad at the moment in the sense that he's the New Japan Strong Champion, mm-hmm. sort of drifting between the two, like like stateside and um, Japan. Mm. Really doesn't really do like anything to sink his teeth in at the moment, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, but- yeah. No man can still fucking go. Absolutely. absolutely 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this would be all of the kicks all fucking day. Yes. Yes, please. But Um, with the added wrinkle of of the pure rules, though, and that's what I thought, because something like this could easily escalate, whereas keep it in check with those pure rules, I think, would would add an extra dynamic. So one thing that Shabbat is really good at with his pure rules is that he he makes people use the... um, 
the rope breaks up very early. So then, as soon as they've used up rope breaks, he can just keep a hold in and just yeah. sort of. That's but, he, but he doesn't use his own. Like, if people get yeah. a hold, they'll try and reverse it into a pin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Break it. So I think- Kenta strikes me as a man that's stubborn enough that wouldn't want to use a rope break. So I think it'd make it really interesting. Yeah. That, I, I think that would be a very good match. Yeah. That would be a fantastic match. Um, it's just made me think of a match I want to add to my card now, which is annoying. <laughs> um, right, what we've got after that? We haven't got a match, Jay. No, no. We've Ooh. got a Tony Khan major announcement. What is it? Let me know. Tony Khan comes out and says, well done, Shibata. I'm retaining. That was that was real good. I'm really impressed with you. What's more impressive is that I've just made Kota Ibushi all elite, and you're now going to face him. Well, right there and then. No, no, no. The next show. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm trying to ring of honor. We've got a show not that long after that. Mm. So could be that. So yeah, be cool. lined up for a future show. Kota Ibushi and Shibata. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, you had your Tony Khan. Huge announcement. That was a big one. Where, <laughs> are, we, where are we going from there? We're going to the AEW Women's Championship. So we're going to have Jamie Hayter defending against a forbidden door entry. And I never know I, I can ne- I never know how to pronounce her name. Is it Julia from Julia. Stardom? Yeah, her. She's fucking excellent. She was in my match of the year candidate. Yes, please. Yeah. And it, I'd have it, her going over here. hundred percent. Yeah. Fucking mad lad. I I think she's possible. I mean, I I really want to see this match, first of all. I think she's possibly going to have her hands full in stardom with um, some money. Well, I originally had her in against Jamie Hayter, but I thought that was a bit too predictable. I, so see, I, I, thought, I thought Monet could face the winner maybe at a later I, date. I think, and I, I just a spoiler alert for mine, I haven't booked Mercedes Monet on my all-in card. Okay. I do have a theory that she's going to show up at Forbidden Door and challenge the women's champion. Mm. at all but in like not in a title versus title just in like an exhibition just match. an exhibition yeah 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 um, and I'm hoping it's Jamie Hayter because that match would absolutely fucking slap mm-hmm. or yes, Brit please. I think Brit and Mercedes Brit. have an absolute banger yeah 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 uh, yeah I'm I'm down for all of that that would yeah. just be like another murder right there mm-hmm. love to see it what's next yeah. oh, did you say murder I, I always want murder wow Call the fucking CSI, mate, because next up is another stipulation match. In fact, it's your last stipulation gimmick match. It's an I quit match between a man that hasn't been on AWTV for a while. For shame. It's Miro against a very, very angry man, Roosh. Fuck off. (laughs) (laughs) I mean... I told you there would be murders on this show. I mean, Miro's an interesting one, isn't it? Because like they keep pitching things to him. He's like, nah, he's like, nah, I don't want that. Like Miro, we want to make you look like a killer, but then lose to Ricky Starks. No, nah, I'm all right. Okay, well, all right, Miro, what, what about if you, nah, <laughs> Miro? Do you want to do anything? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's flexible wife. That's what he wants to flexible do. Flexible wife and his neck of sand. I, I think he's just de- destined to feud with God at this point. Um, <laughs> Yeah, this would be an actual war crime. Um, yeah, it would. It really would. You probably have to take both men to the Hague. I, I assume Roosh is winning that. No, Mira's winning that. I oh, Roosh is winning that. <laughs> Roosh is a fucking lunatic. Roosh I know. Is I, know I know. On paper, Roosh wins that, but in my head, because I love Miro, Miro needs to win that. The, the only way Miro wins that is if Roosh is like bleeding out in the middle of the ring, <laughs> and they have, to, they have to stop the match. What I should have done, I should have made Tony Khan's major announcement for like a new title, and it's just like the Murder Boy title, and this is the first match for it. But maybe another show. Don't, don't worry, I'm sure another show will have a Murder Boy title that might might show up on this channel. Or something. <laughs> um, don't worry about that. Right. So after seeing actual crime in the ring, what's next? Um, do you like do you like fast lads? Do you like flippy boys? I love flippy shit. Yeah, do you like scramble matches? Love good scramble. That's match. what I've got for you for the international Ooh. championship. We've got a scramble match: Orange Cassidy, Bandido, 
Darby Allen, Swerve Strickland, Buddy Matthews, and Pac. Fucking hell. Yeah, get that up, yeah. Is Pac winning that then? Uh, Pac is winning that, yeah. Yeah, 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 he is. Yeah. Of course he fucking is. <laughs> of course he, he is. A, need a British person to win a, win a belt in the UK. Imagine doing a show exactly. in the UK. No Brits winning belts. <laughs> fucking ludicrous. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be silly. Yeah, That'd be and silly. when I when I say scramble match as well, because I think some people's idea of a scramble match is different to maybe what mine is. So my memory of scramble matches from I don't know. You mean like a WWE Championship scramble? A match? WWE Championship scramble match. So oh, that's, a, that's a little bit close to a fucking gimmick. Match, is it? Actually. Is it a little bit close? Ah, uh, all right. In that I'll, case, it's just I'll a let, fucking I'll multi. Let it, I'll let it slide. But it's a little bit close. In, in that case, fuck it. It's just a multi-man if it, match. If it's just a, if it's just a six-pack challenge. Yeah, fuck it. You can have two six-pack challenges on one show. There you go. I, I've, I, I've already, I treat you. I've already booked that on mine. It's fine. Done. It's fine. But I, ideally, if, if I did have the extra stipulation gimmick, I'd make this a, a proper championship scramble match. So just like pinfall after pinfall after pinfall, whoever's the last pinfall... Uh, holder wild. as the champion. And to be fair, like Bandido just doing a fucking ton of roll-ups there. Yeah. Swear of committing crimes. Yeah. Great. Yeah. All about that. Um, right. Penultimate match on the card. Because because there hasn't been much tag team action on here. No, there hasn't. It's been there hasn't. a massive there hasn't, short. But it's, but it's okay because I've, I've saved. I've saved the best. Or there's, some of the best. There's, there's a lot of tag teams you haven't said there. That, yeah. like at all yeah well don't you worry here we are right. so question gauntlet match that's not a stipulate that's not a gimmick or is it uh, I'll, I'll let i'll let that slide that's fine okay cool I'll so gauntlet match slide. this is another winner take all business this is for the AEW and new japan tag team uh championships a gauntlet match the young bucks ftr the lucha bros and aussie open you could add the Ring of Honor tag titles in there as well. And the Ring of Honor tag team titles. There you go. Wait, now one else. <laughs> uh, are we fixing seven-star FTR? Is that what we're doing here? Yeah. Now, I so I was really to and throwing who I wanted to put in here. Um, and also, I did have a trios match in here at one point, and I had House of Black against um, the United Empire. Yeah. There's a... But, there's a- there is a massive void of Merdekai on your card, which is... Yeah, insane. I know. And that, that's why I wanted to put him in. But then I was like, oh, but then that's... I have to put in the United Empire, which was three entries. And then I was like, yeah, but I wanted to include this person uh, here. And I, I suppose he could just go and do a black sick on someone in one of the matches. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A black sick on everyone in the, the, the Hoss Pack Challenge at the start. Yeah, yeah just help, help Brody that way. Yeah. I mean, nice. two of two of the mem- two of the four members of of House of Black have made it on there. You've got Buddy Matthews. You've got Brody King. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, um, who wins this then? Who wins this? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say Aussie Open. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I love FTR. Don't get me wrong. I love FTR. I thought Aussie Open were shooing to win the ROH titles the other day. Mm. I thought they were fucking guaranteed to do that. Yeah. Um. Like, I, every single team in this match, I love. Obviously, that's why I've put them in. And we know they can all have great matches against one another in standard tag matches. Like, I was fortunate enough to see FTR against Aussie Open at uh, Royal Quest last year, which was outstanding. Um, and obviously, the Bucks and Lucha Bros, like, their kind of track record of tag matches speaks for themselves. Um, I'm not sure I've ever seen them in, and, and I'm sure they have had them, but, like, a, a more than traditional tag team match um and i think there's a really good style of dynamics in there as well like you've got a lot of high flying stuff a lot of stiff stuff a lot of really traditional ton of tag team wrestling stuff i think it'd be a fantastic mesh of everything i'd be really really excited to see that smorgasbord of madness yeah and i think my reason for saying aussie open going over there and taking it is that the bucks was just saying about kind of track records like the bucks have a, a fucking CV of, of titles and accolades, as do FTR now. Lucha Bros do as well, to a degree. Aussie Open feel like they're only 
just starting to get that level of recognition. And whilst they've, they've been about for a good amount of time, like shout out to Wrestling Resurgence. I remember seeing them when they booked them six, seven, maybe years ago. I in Leicester. She was like an actual child. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is the, the, the Attenborough Art Centre in Leicester. And even then, I remember sat thinking, these guys are phenomenal. These are so, so good. And then I didn't know what happened to them. And it was only the last couple of years. I'm like, oh, okay, they're, they're in Japan. And started to watch them a bit more, remembered just how good they were. And then, as I said, I was lucky enough to see them against FTR at Royal Quest. And there was kind of a, a really nice moment at the end where it was a, an appreciation for, like, you guys are fucking awesome. Like, FTR to, to Aussie Open. Um, and, yeah, I feel like a lot of people are just starting to kind of recognise that and get eyes on it. So much in the same way I said about Jade Cargill going over on Athena to kind of establish her, I would have that for Aussie Open here. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, that that would be also a phenomenal match. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. You said that was penultimate. What's the main? What's closing the show? What's closing the show? It's for the AEW and IWGP uh, Heavyweight Championship. Ooh. MJF, obviously your AEW champion, against the Rainmaker, Kazuchika Okada. <laughs> what? Well, Okada's not the champion anymore, is he? <laughs> oh, shit. Well, at time of recording, uh, two hours ago he was time, when I made this time. fucking list. <laughs> that, that would be definitely a way to put butts in seats. Yes, it would. Um, who wins? I mean, I'm not it? swapping it out. I'm not putting Sonata against NJF. Fuck that. Uh, that'd be fair. That's fair. <laughs> um, who's winning that? Who do you who do you think's winning that? Salt of the Earth, MJF. Wash your mouth out. Or, or time limit draw. No, it's Okada. We've just won. Nah. Just just won. Uh, as maker. much as much as it pains me to say it, MJF's like legit becoming the best in the world at the moment. Yeah, no, he is. I'm not, I, and I don't disagree with that. I'm, it's I'm horrifying to think it, but yeah, yeah, no, he is. I agree at the hundred and ten percent. But Akada, yeah. So some um, anything, any shenanigans after the match at all, or uh, no, I hadn't really factored that in. But you know what? I wouldn't want shenanigans if I was going to put any shenanigans in. I'd have I'd have Malakai Black come out and do some black six. Yeah. In in two matches. There's, there's why not? Quite, there's quite a few bigger missions from that card. I know there is. It was fucking tough. I'm quite surprised by a few of them. Go on. No John Moxley. Nah. No no Merdekai. That was a difficult one. As I say, I had him in a trios match initially. No, no Claudio. Nah. Fair enough. Nah. I don't well, dislike no, him. I just no couldn't BCC find the at all. No what? No, no BCC at all. Uh, you said isn't Black it? Sabre Junior and Brian Danielson would uh, disagree. Counts. Doesn't count. What do you mean it doesn't count? That, Why does that, it not count? Bra- Brian Danielson is just a happy homeowner. Um, also, initially, I actually had to help to fix up the house. <laughs> initially, I did have Kenta against Willie Yuta instead of Kenta against Shibata. No hangman as well. That's quite a big, quite yeah. A big just, I suppose. I suppose I say that you didn't say everyone who's going to be in the battle royal. They could be in the battle royal. Exactly. Exactly. That. Yeah. They, yeah. There you go. They're all in the battle royal. Okay. Okay. I, I fixed fixed that for you. <laughs> so that that has been a phenomenal look at what we've got in store. Um. Do you, do you think Tony's gonna? Make a big announcement about the next time they're back. So Tony's going to make big announcements fucking every week. That's what he does, isn't it? No, no. I mean, I mean, on the night, do you reckon he's going to make an announcement about? Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, yeah. That there'll be something massive about them coming back to the UK, without a doubt, without a doubt. Yeah. Like I, they they're going to aim to do like a a show over here once a year or something like that. I I think so. I think that they should as well. It doesn't it even makes doesn't sense. even need to be a pay per view. It can be just like. A theme dynamite or something. Well, like they do with like um like Grand Slam, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Like, well, like that's during the pandemic, fights. were they not meant to do like Fighter Fest over here? Was that the one they were planning? Fighter Fest, yeah, in twenty twenty. Yeah, that went to shit mm. because the world went on fire. So yeah, 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 yeah. 
Um, but yeah, I imagine I imagine we'll get some of that. It, it, it seems very much like WWE making a point of doing a show over here once a year. It would make perfect sense that AEW did the same thing. Especially with, like, obviously their ties to London as well with Tony Khan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he kind of... It's, al- it's almost as if he's kind of got his finger a little bit more on the pulse of what goes on over here than... Mm. WWE's team at times, it seems. Yeah, it, yeah, it seems. yeah I agree. Um, especially bringing like a guy like Jarrett, and who obviously Impact used to do a lot of touring over here, and mm-hmm. sell out arenas when they struggled to do that in the in the US. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think, I think we could see potentially more than one announcement in regards to that. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't be upset about that. I, I still do think we're probably going to get a rampage. Like the go home rampage announced to be oh, in some, for sure. somewhere in the UK prior to that, but then also they might they might not want to have the first UK show being like a go home show, a go big, home show, a big UK show. Uh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they Let's might do, do the, the they might pre record the following week's rampage. They might, just they might like do that. the following like afterwards. Week's dynamite, yeah, Absolutely. or dynamite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't. Whatever I wouldn't. they do, I'm pissing my pants excited for it like this is really really fucking cool i wouldn't be mad if they um if they did like in the electric ballroom an roh set tapings Mm. that'd be cool that would be cool or because it saves me from traveling around go to go to one of roh's fucking home fucking places in the uk the liverpool olympia there you go I'm Nigel McGuinness come out and just headbutt a fucking ring post for tradition. <laughs> um, it'd be glorious. Uh, but yeah, this is this has been us kind of running down the cards of Troy's fantasy card, I should say. We are going to predict the, the actual cards closer to the time when they've sprinkled a few breadcrumbs for us. Um, thanks for joining us, Troy. That, I'd, I'd I love that. Money. I'd pay yeah. a bit of money for that show. Yeah, man, that was that was fun to put together. It was it was extremely difficult. There was some UK talent I wanted to include on it as well, like here and there. Like I thought, I don't know, something between MJF and say, I don't know, a Spike Trevay. Just even some sort of promo interaction would be fun. MJF's done a promo for the love of wrestling with JJ Webb, which was fantastic. Nice. JJ Webb called him out. MJF got out of his seat, took his jacket off. And then said, I hate everybody here too. And then he, like, wow. five, and then he just sat back down. <laughs> um, yeah, that was great. Yeah. No, that's been fantastic. Though. A lot of fun putting that together. Yeah. Well, let us know in the comments what you think, what matches you'd like to see at AEW All In. And if you go on the show, so are we. Um, yeah. We are going to try and arrange, obviously it's very early days, we're going to try and arrange some kind of meet up with any of our listeners, any listeners from all the podcasts or the po- podcasts who want to join us, just a nice way to kind of celebrate wrestling. And as, as I said at the start, like this is the biggest UK show, I think in the last 30 years, given that it's in Wembley, mm-hmm. not, not to kind of before people like go, Oh, what about Clash of the Castle? Not to discredit that. That was amazing. Mm-hmm. But as far as attendance wise, but well, potential attendance wise, this is huge. And yeah, but when when Clash got announced, I remember we had we certainly had a conversation about it saying it's just a shame they didn't announce Wembley mm. because yeah. it, it felt like it made more sense. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is this is gigantic. I'm yeah. so fucking excited for this. Mm-hmm. I think we've all been frothing at the mouth for an AEW show in the UK for so fucking long mm-hmm. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's very cool. But yeah, thank you for joining us. Find us on the socials at Where Troy. Uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Untitled Wrestling Podcast, Twitter, Twitch, and Discord, Untitled Rest Pod, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Thank you. We will see you soon. Bye. Bye.